Albert, and I will be re reporting on the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket by Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe was born in Boston, Massachusetts at the, on January 19th, 1809 to two actors. His parents, they abandoned him, and so he his first view of the world was uh, through the boarding house in Boston. Um, orphaned at the age of two after his father left and his mother died of tuberculosis. He was taken in but not formally adopted by the Allen family. They raised him. Um, he moved to the United Kingdom in 1815, um, first to Scotland, then to London, then to a village outside of Chelsea, and back to Virginia at the age of 11. He got a first-rate education while in the UK and continued it when moving to America. He was a student and a soldier, but not a very good one. He had a drinking and gambling problem, and his father refused to pay off his debts. Um, thus, he joined the army under the false name of Edgar Allan Perry. Um, that didn't work out. He tried he attained a position at West Point through his father's his foster father's influence and when that didn't work out he was discharged he moved in with an aunt and fell in love with her 13 year old daughter and they were married whenever he was 26 um, it worked though and he died in Baltimore Maryland four years after her passing from the same illness that afflicted his mother tuberculosis at the age of 40. Some notable works were his first book, uh, Tamerlan and Other Poems. He published it at the age of 18. Uh, the MS found in a message found in a bottle in 1833 was his first work to get a, gain a claim. Um, he won a writing con, he won a prize in a newspaper. Uh, the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym was published in 1838. <clears throat> um, we're more familiar with the, his works, The Fall of the House of Usher, The Black Cat, The Pit and the Pendulum, and The Telltale Heart. The Raven, his most famous work, didn't appear until 1845. What is Pym about? What is the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket about? And two boys get blazing drunk and decide to take their ship out on the water. Um, they're run over by a whaling vessel and nearly die, but are saved by the crew, which go against the captain's wishes. Uh, later, they decide to sneak Arthur on board the Grampus, in which Augustus's father is the captain. And... Um, once they're far enough away from land, show him to be a stowaway, and then he'll get the adventure he was always longing for. Um, little does he know that he's trapped. He's trapped in the hole for several for ten days before Augustus comes back and tells him that there was a mutiny on board and twenty-two of the crew are dead. Um, the they along with Dirk Peters. Uh, plan a second mutiny to disband the group and um, end up the only ones on the ship, in addition to Richard Parker, who begged for his life. Are starving in the ocean and resort to cannibalism. Uh, their boat is overturned and they are saved by the Jane Grey, the Jane Guy, uh, on its way to find the Aurora's Islands. Um, they come upon the untouched island of Salal, in which the natives are originally friendly, but turn against them. Um, they escape and head to the South Pole. Arthur Gordon Pym is the main character. He has the best friend, Augustus Bernard. Um, Dirk Peters is the man they befriend after the mutiny of the Gr Grampus, um, and Richard Parker, the man that begs for his life. Um, Arthur Pym is the narrator, narrator, and um, the whole story takes part from his takes his point of view in things. Um, everyone else is not essential. They are essential in that they prove a purpose. They move the story along, 
but no depth is given. Uh, Seymour the cook was the original mutineer. Captain Guy is the man looking for the Aurora's Islands. Um, he basically has a ship and rescues them, um, but doesn't prove of much value, literally. Um, to it is the native king, and Nunu is another native which they hold captive to help them uh, in their escape to the south. Historically speaking, uh, exploration was on the rise. Everyone was up in arms about exploration and new lands to be discovered. Now that the, uh, the New World had been explored and claimed, um, it was everywhere and anywhere that you could get land. They weren't making any more of it. Revolution and new forms of government. Um, America had led a revolution and then France followed. Um, soon, all across Europe, uh, new forms of government were being put in place. Um, imp European imperialism, the thought that you could find an island and claim it as your own and um, build an empire was on the rise. Um, again, exploration was just very big at this time, and race relations, of course, in America were very high um, in the minds of the reader and people in general. In the regards to science, uh, biology was very big. Darwin's first discoveries were made. Um, Poe makes several allusions to this in his book. Uh, chemistry, he devotes several paragraphs to matches. Uh, maybe not literally, but it seemed like it. it he makes a pattern of referencing phosphorus matches. They were all the rage. They were a new invention. So in psychology and medicine, uh, he talks about yellow fever at one point, madness, water treatment for drunkenness, and recirculating blood. Um, all Uh, in literature, transcendentalism as a movement had begun uh, in the early 1800s, before the, before the early 1800s. Uh, it believed in the inherent good of people and that God was within you and an eternal guide, as well as the sense of the individual. Um, it rejected the ideas of Calvinism, which believed that uh, you were already on a predestined course and you were already good or evil and there was nothing you could do about it. Uh, transcendentalism and the following Romantic period uh, disproved that through the thought that um, there was good in the world and you as an individual um, were capable of experiencing and recreating it. Um, the Romantics believed that nature in itself was very good, but humans were corruptible. Um, uh, religion is deeply personal it relates to the individual um, even more so than trans transcendentalism. Uh, dark romanticism came about um, in the idea that there is no inherent good and that the good in nature may not be um, reflected in humans. Um, it explored the depths of human emotion by way of uh, the furthest recesses of depression and the greatest triumphs of joy, um, but focus on the former more in regards to um, our life force and it, inhabiting it uh, by way of our thoughts. Um, it focused on the irrational or the unexplained, while romanticism focused on the five senses and how we perceive the beauty of nature around you uh, romanticism, the dark romanticism focused on the what what you can't see, what you can't uh, experience, what is not there, what does not make sense. The themes of the book include violence and gore. Uh, there was several bloody descriptions of corpses. The battles can be particularly gruesome. Uh, the mutinies, um, like likewise and uh, the morbidity in some of the figures of uh, Pym's imagination um, are very dark. Um, and that goes along with insensibility and gloom. Gloomy outlook is 
kind of a staple, it seems, of Poe. But uh, he does make use of this in several occasions. Uh, the, f f the f darkest recesses of the human mind can be reached within the limits that Pym and his companions are faced with. Um, and emotion, referring back to romanticism, it does it take it takes emotion very serious, seriously in this book. And you can see, um, even in complete joy, how insanity can can uh, rear its head. Losing sense of time while Pym is below deck and out at sea, uh, both times he loses all sense of time and place. Um, nightmares are not a common occurrence, but relative to the story. And confinement and solitude is also a main theme. Uh, suffocation is hugely prevalent in his hold, his days in the hold, as well as uh, later on Salal when he is trapped uh, along with uh, Peters in the rock facing. Uh, cramp space is evident of that as well, and darkness. Um, want of company was a perf especially relevant at sea um, at one point, so much so that uh, they imagined people coming to save them, and when they arrived, they were all dead. Color was very big in this book, especially the colors black, white, and crimson, or red. Um, most of the animals described are either black or white, and if they are either of those, such as the mammal that was found near the Antarctic, uh, it has red teeth. Uh, the Salal people are jet black with black hair, black clothes, and the snow that later, the ash, ashen like substance that later envelops them as they head southward is white, and everything in the, in the book. Uh, that is white is described as perfectly white. Uh, God does make several appearances, although I don't consider him a symbol myself. Uh, he is symbolic in this book as he only appears at the highest and lowest points, um, either when the characters are begging for mercy or shouting their praise. Um, the axe is a big symbol in this book. It arrives much like Dirk Peters at any point when everything seems hopeless. Um, it becomes almost a character in itself. Literary devices used irony is a big one. Um, Richard Parker is the first to uh, suggest turning to cannibalism when faced with starvation, and he is the first one to draw the, draw the short straw and die because of it. Um, the, as I spoke earlier about the rescue they thought had people on it, uh, they had wanted for want a human company and um, said if only a ship would come along with people on board, um, people, a ship did come and people were on board, but they were all dead. The port wine, uh, Arthur goes below deck to try to score provisions. He does come up with a bottle of port wine whenever he returns below deck. Uh, the others partake in it without him. He feels betrayal, but then having drank on an empty stomach, they are all miserably uh, dehydrated and hungover, and he doesn't have to partake in that. The Salal's undoing their, um, their betrayal uh, ultimate ended in their betrayal of the people is a reflection of the instance of the port wine where they ended up worse for it. Um, they ransack the ship, the Jane Guy, and being a whaling ship full of whale oil, it blows up. Foreshadowing is shown in the description of the sailing mechanics. He spends a good chapter on how a uh, ship must be loaded in order not to sink. Um, reading it, you sense that something may happen, and indeed it does. The ship goes under. Uh, the seagull picking at the dead, uh, at the, a corpse of a seaman, 
um, the sh same ship that they thought people would be alive on, but were not. Uh, the seagull drops a piece of flesh in between them, and they all they see it, and Pym's thoughts turn to darkness. Um, this is a, an inclination that cannibalism may be well on its way, and indeed it is. The strengthening of numbers of the Salal, whenever the um, Jane Guy company is moving about the island, they are treated very, very welcoming, very friendly. Um, but the, the number of Salal people, the natives, are ever growing. Um, this is indicative that something may be happening, such as an uprising, and indeed that comes to pass. It was good. It was a tale of adventure, which I liked. Um, the story keeps your interest, and moral dilemmas were prevalent uh, throughout, and it makes you think. Um, it does have appeal as informative, especially if you're reading it from the perspective of a person in the 18. 40s, 30, late 30s um, onward. Uh, I enjoy um, the racial implications are a big uh, thing. As I said, the color was a big uh, tone, overtone of the story. Um, but of course, uh, black and white, north and south was very prevalent on uh, the minds. Uh, it was very much, it was heavy on people's minds, um, so this may not be um, a it may be not it may not be putting the two colors at odds, but just bringing them about to uh, think about but uh, still it was a hard read um, regarding everything that we know has happened hence uh, the departure from the narrative at several points, uh, it goes into, as I said, talking about the ship, um, or at one point it talks about uh, latitude and longitude of different islands and uh, Darwin's discoveries. It, it draws away from the overall story and you lose some of its uh, appeal. The lack of character depth was a big, uh, big hang-up I had with the, with the book. Um, most of these people that are introduced are people that Arthur is meeting for the first time, but still there is no backstory that's given, or um, any type of, aside from one person getting a physical description, no sense of description for any of the characters, um, and you don't see much growth in either Pym. Uh, Arthur, Arthur Gordon Pym or any of the other characters. Uh, one that sheds the most would probably be Dirk Peters. He's originally portrayed as um, a simple, you know, uh, minded and looking person uh, that doesn't have much appeal, but later leads to I would read it because it, it is interesting in that it reads like a dream, and I don't mean this in a positive, uh, non-literal way. Uh, it reads like a dream in that Pym is the central character and never departs from that, um, except in his, I did mention departing from the narration, but he, he is the central character and all you feel is his mind. Uh, the... Uh, you, you're constantly going as if you were in a dream. In a dream, you don't stop and think. You don't stop and write. You don't stop to pee. You are in movement. Um, and this story is very, not rushed, but constant, constant thinking, constant going. And uh, so the strange occurrences that couldn't otherwise be explained um, are very much part of this as well. You... Everything feels so real in a dream, and that's very similarly how I felt reading this. Um, the wild coincidence of things happening that, you know, 
may have, some England may have, you know, it may have been foreshadowed, but uh, you never would have thought about it and your subconscious comes in. It was enjoyable and I can see how it was literal, literary and I would actually read it again. Um, more to follow if given the chance.